Hi students, we're starting dictation with our common dictation reminders. Remember that you should try to write as much as you can. Of course, you're not going to be able to catch every word from every sentence, and that's really okay if you can't catch all of the words. That's why you're here, is to improve your ability to listen and interpret spoken American English. Remember that we always practice the sentences multiple times. The first few times, you'll hear the sentences fast, using my reduced spoken American English. If you can't catch it, wait until the second practice, when we're going to be slowing the sentences down, using our more clear pronunciation, and then making comparison between the clear pronunciation and the reduced pronunciation of American English. Remember to be patient. This is a difficult skill to improve upon. Um, also remember that this isn't about speaking like me. This isn't a pronunciation activity. This is about adjusting your ear and improving your ability to listen to and interpret spoken American English so that you can easier, so that you can have an easier time understanding people um, at your child's school, at your work, at the grocery store. Are you feeling ready? Let's begin. We're jumping back into a standard dictation this week. Um, the previous two dictations have been focused on apostrophe S and apostrophe D. Um, this dictation does have a grammar focus, um, a pronunciation focus, um, but I don't want to tell you what it is at the beginning here. Let me know in the comments if you have figured out what is the specific pronunciation focus that we're thinking about in this lesson. We have six sentences for our dictation practice, and then I have two additional sentences at the end because I want us to think about a specific um, comparison in pronunciation. So, ready to start? Number one, I'd like to try some of that. I'd like to try some of that. I'd like to try some of that. Two, she said she was kind of busy last week. She said she was kind of busy last week. She said she was kind of busy last week. Number three. What kind of car are you looking for? What kind of car are you looking for? What kind of car are you looking for? Make sure the end of number three, you have which type of punctuation mark? Come to number four. She was looking for some of that yesterday. She was looking for some of that yesterday. She was looking for some of that yesterday. Want to get lunch after class? Number five. Want to get lunch after class? Want to get lunch after class? Number six. I'm going to have to do it later.
I'm going to have to do it later. I'm going to have to do it later. The last two that we're going to have in this dictation, I really want you to notice the difference between the present tense and the past tense. Seven, she told me that I have to help her. She told me that I have to help her. She told me that I have to help her. Number eight. She told me that I had to help her. She told me that I had to help her. She told me that I had to help her. Come back up to the beginning one more time for each sentence. Get as much as you can down and then we'll come together to review. Number one, I'd like to try some of that. Two, she said she was kind of busy last week. Three, what kind of car are you looking for? Four, she was looking for some of that yesterday. Number five, want to get lunch after class? Six, I'm going to have to do it later. And seven and eight, remember we're thinking about the difference between present tense and past tense in my pronunciation. Seven, she told me that I have to help her. Eight, she told me that I had to help her. All right, before we take the sentences to review, make sure you look back over your sentences yourself, check for punctuation. You should have one, two, you should have two question marks in these eight sentences, in these eight phrases. Make sure you have two question marks. Look at your grammar, do your sentences make sense? And then let's jump into our review. Number one, I'd like to try some of that. I'd like to try some of that. My I would, condensing down, connecting down to I'd, I'd like, I'd like. The T and R in many forms of American English become more similar to the CH sound, try, try, travel, trip, trouble. I'd like to try, I'd like to try. I'd like to try some of that. I'd like to try some of that, some of, some of that. In this sentence, I'm saying a piece of that, a bit of that, a few, a small amount, some of that. Number two, she said she was kind of busy last week. She said she was kind of busy last week. Here my big connection, my big reduction is the kinda, kinda, kind of. 
In class, we've talked about kind of a lot and how there are two different meanings for kind of. It can mean type, category, but it also can mean a little bit, a small amount, kind of busy, kind of tired, kind of hungry. She said she was kind of busy last week. Number three also has kind of, but the other meaning, the other usage of kind of. What kind of car are you looking for? What kind of car are you looking for? Right away you hear kind of, kind of. What kind of car? Car, are. It pulls together and you hear what kind of car are, what kind of car are you looking for? My word you, shortening down to ya. What kind of car are ya? What kind of car are ya? Always my ing. I'm cutting that g and I'm saying looking, looking. What kind of car are you looking for? Hmm. And actually when I'm saying it, I am using a strong for. But many times when I say for, for. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? And my F-O-R becomes shortened to this for. Where my number for, F-O-U-R, always stays a strong for. In class, we've practiced the phrase for, F-O-R, for, four years. For four years. She's been looking. She's been looking for four years. For four. She's been looking for four years. All right, moving on. Number four. She was looking for some of that yesterday. She was looking for some of that yesterday. Again, my looking, looking. She was looking for, she was looking for some of that yesterday. Some of connecting to become summer, summer. She was looking for some of that. Five is a crazy piece of, of pronunciation, and I'm really sorry for five. What I say is, want to get lunch after class? Want to get lunch after class? But the grammar of the sentence is not want to get lunch. The grammar of the sentence is, do you, do you want to? Do you wanna? Do ya? Do ya? Do you wanna get lunch? Wanna get lunch? Wanna go for coffee? Wanna help me out next week? Do ya? Do you wanna go? Wanna go? Even though I'm only saying, and I'm starting with wanna, the grammar of my question is, do you want to? Really sorry for that crazy piece of pronunciation, students. And I hope you didn't forget your question mark. I know number six was really difficult. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do it later. I'm gonna have to do it later. I'm pushing a lot of reduced pieces together. I'm going to have to do it later. If I separated it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do it. It's easier for you. I'm gonna have to do it later. But I'm pushing together for my I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to do it later. I am making my I'm going to making my gonna have to, the have to, and then the two vowels here, the vowel of do and the vowel in it, pushing together. You don't hear do it. You hear them linked together, do it, do it. This first pronunciation here, I'm gonna have to do it later. I'm gonna have to do it later, do it. My even more reduced pronunciation, I'm going to have to do it later. Seven and eight, we're just going to look at quickly together. She told me that. She told me that I have to help her. 
She told me that I had to help her. I have to go. I had to go. We're thinking about the difference between the present tense, have to, and the past tense, had to, had to. I have to work. I had to work. I have to practice my listening. I had to practice my listening. I have to make another video. I had to make another video. One more time, all of these sentences together. Number one, I'd like to try some of that. Two, she said she was kind of busy last week. Three, what kind of car are you looking for? Four, she was looking for some of that yesterday. Five, do you want to get lunch after class? Want to get lunch after class? Six, I'm going to have to do it later. I'm going to have to do it later. And then seven and eight, thinking about the difference between that present and past. She told me that I have to help her. She told me that I had to help her. All right, that's the end of dictation for today. I hope I'll see you later. See you next time. How'd you do on this dictation? How'd you? How'd you do on this dictation? Let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know which one was the hardest for you, which one you'd like to practice a little bit more of, or let me know if they were all feeling easy for you too. It's always good to look at your success as well as your difficulties. Finally, my student told me I'm supposed to tell you. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. Have a good day. Bye.